great to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. And I want a few would to take your Bibles and turn to the book of John chapter 1. And we're going to start with verse 1 through 14. I want to do a little lengthy uh, reading this morning. But just hang with me. I'm going to establish a point today. <coughs> Hallelujah. I'm expecting for God to do some mighty things here this morning. Yes. That I want to say this morning, if you're here and maybe you're lost and you're undone. Jesus Christ is the answer. Yes, he is. If you're here this morning and you're sick, Jesus Christ is the answer. Yes, if you're here this morning and just deal with emotional issues, Jesus Christ is the answer. Yes. He changes everything. In the book of John, and starting with chapter 1 and verse one, I want to read down through verse 14 here. He says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and and truth. I want to read from James chapter 1 starting with verse 19. I want to establish something this morning as you're turning to James chapter 1 that you cannot separate Jesus from the Word because the Word was who He was. The Word was Jesus. It begins to explain this in John chapter 1 as we begin to read that in the beginning was the Word and the Word was God. And the Word was dwelt among us and become flesh. It begins to point to Jesus Christ that He is the Word. In the book of James chapter 1, He says, Wherefore, my beloved brother, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Lord, let us practice this. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul, or able to deliver, able to heal, save to make whole. Yes. It comes to the power of the engrafted word when the word becomes a part of who you are, becomes a part of your life. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, and being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man, Somebody say, this man. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. In other words, it's saying here, the man that does the word, that not necessarily just hears it, but the one who activates it, it becomes a part of who he is, a part of his life. And so when the word of God begins to begin to regulate your life and become to be a ruling factor in your life, that that man there is the one that's going to be blessed. Just because you're sitting here in the house of God and just because you hear the Word of God does not necessarily mean that when you get up from here and go get in your car and drive to your home that you're going to obey the Word of God. 
I think sometimes we get this thing messed up and we get it twisted. Because I hear sometimes as pastor, I've heard over the years that pastor, I've been in church, but my life has not changed. The way I'm going to tell you, just by being here, it's not probably, I hate to say this, but it, it's a good idea that it may not change anything until you let what you hear begin to affect your lifestyle and what you're doing. Right. You've, got to, you've got to become a part of who you are. We went to a buffet one time. It'd be like someone going to a buffet and all the food there and yet leaving hungry. And you would ask, why did you leave hungry? They had a buffet there, but it does you no good to have the food that is laid out in front of you unless you go take your plate, walk up to the buffet line and fill your plate up and begin to consume what you have put on your plate. Is anybody with me this morning? I'm going to break this down and make it very, very simple. The Word of God must begin to affect your life if you expect to reap the benefits of what He has said here. You cannot necessarily, you cannot just be a hearer of your Word and not a doer of the Word and expect great things to begin to happen. You've got to be not only a hearer of the Word of God, but now also a what? A doer of the Word. In the book of Matthew, chapter 21, and chapter 7, and verse 21, Jesus has preached the Sermon on the Mount. And one of the things that he begins to talk about is building a house. And in Matthew, chapter 7, and verse 21, he talks, begins to talk about a foundation. About laying a foundation down. And he says here, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devil. I want to tell you this morning, so you do not get confused, there is just simply power in the name of Jesus, no matter who is using it. There's power in that name. He, he just When you begin to use His name and begin to declare the Word of God, it's just power in that regardless of who is speaking it forth. He says here there were some that began to cry out. There were some that prophesied and even some that cast out devils in the name of Jesus and done many wonderful works. And in verse 23 it says, And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Verse 24. Therefore, watch this, this little story here. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto him as a wise man, which built his house upon a rock, and the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and it beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened to the foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and it beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Father, I thank you for this opportunity and ask God that you bless the reading of your word this morning. And as we begin to preach your word, let our ears be open, let our hearts be receptive to your word as it goes forth. We pray, Lord, today in the mighty name of Jesus that you're working in the hearts and the lives of individuals, in the, in, in the lives of homes this morning, that there's healing, salvation, and deliverance that will be manifested in this house here today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to notice one thing here. Just because you have heard the word and acted upon it, the word, does not exempt you from the storms of life. Just look around you very good. Just look around. I know there's, there's a very diverse congregation here this morning from all ages. We got some that's young and some that's old. But no matter who you are, don't let the person sit beside you fool you. They've been through storms. Storms hit every home. And if they're not hit yours, get ready. There's a storm that is coming. He makes mention here just because that even 
even being a believer did not exempt you from the storm. He makes mention of two different categories of people here. And he says one are wise and one are foolish. The thing that defined the difference in the wise and the foolish was not the storms that come, but how they have built their lives and what they have built upon. He said the storms and the wind blew. There was, there was the wind and the rain and the floods. And it came upon each house. I want to tell you the rains and the storms is coming there to define what your house has been built upon. Be a hearer of the word and not a doer only. The foundation is very important in everything. I want to share a couple of stories with you I thought that you would like this morning. Probably several years ago, I lose track with time. But several years ago, and I had always been, I always liked hot rods, I always liked fast cars. The faster, the better, the, the more extreme. I'm telling you, I love it. And I, I, I just, I like to go fast. And I, I several years ago, there was a man down the road, I said, I'm going to get me, I'm going to go back and I won't be a hot rod. I started out and I went and bought me a 1981 Corvette. Man down the street had it. I went down the road and I got this thing and I brought it to the house. Well, my wife can uh, testify to this. The first thing I do to anything is put it in my shop, whether it's running good or running bad, is take the hood up and go take your stuff off. <laughs> Very first thing I do. What are you taking this stuff off for? Oh, it's just small control. It's, it's slowing us down. <laughs> And if that don't do, do good enough, man, I, I go and get my Jags magazine. It's the Hot Rod magazine. And I'm looking in there. I want aluminum heads that are there. I get these aluminum heads. Ella Brock's got an RPM performer kit right here. I can put it on a 350 Chevrolet, and it is guaranteed to produce 420 horses. So I go and I put this stuff on here, and I'm out there in my shed, and I have put aluminum heads on the intake and a bigger car right there. I want this baby to go fast. I've done all of that. I get it out on the road and I start to drive a little bit. But I had noticed even prior to this, I, there were some complications with the steering of it. But I wasn't really worried about the driving of it right now. All I was worried about was the speed of it. I said, I just handle the drive. And we'll stay between the two ditches somehow or another. Well, if that wasn't fast enough, so I went up to the advanced auto parts. I told them, I said, order me that nitrous oxide kit. <laughs> the one that's listed it, that was supposed to be able to put 150 more horses to this engine. I put 150 more horses to this engine, and I get out on the road, and I tell my uncle, he's in the hot rods. I said, Uncle Danny, you ain't. He said, hop in this bad boy right here. Let me tell you for a ride. <coughs> We get to going down the road and we pull up out and we live on the country road, man, and I hit that gas and I we got it going, I hit the button and, and that thing boy took off and when that 150 more horses went to it, uh, by the time we had went very far, so went bam! That black smoke come out on the side. So what happened? He said, I think you just blowed it up. <laughs> I looked up on the thing see the inside of my motor. <laughs> that wasn't good enough. I said, that's all right. That, that was a 350. I got a 400 block at the house. <laughs> We're going back bigger and better with everything. I come back and I redo everything on it. That I'm putting more horsepower and went and done away with that nitrous oxide kit and told them I wanted the big shot, which put 300 plus horses to it. My only problem was that when you give this car the gas, and when it began to accelerate, it would pull the front end up. I wouldn't say all the way off the ground, but it would pull it, send it up. And when you would let off the gas, and when it would come back down, it always wanted to pull to the ditch. Every time I was down the road with a boy that done some help, done some work for me, and I carried him for a ride in it, and boy, we took off, and this thing, boy, come up, and when it, I let off of it, and the front end went down, boy, we it, it shot over to the ditch. He said, man, you need to do something about this. <laughs> You're going to wreck. <laughs> Just hang on, I'm carrying you somewhere, all right? You might not think I got a mess. I got something for you today. <laughs> I have come to find out that I, that I had done all the work to the car, 
and the flame was bent. And this is what I'm telling you. What good is it to have all the power in the world? What good is it to have a big motor? What good is it to have a fast car if you can't keep it between the ditch? See, sometimes we get so caught up, we get our priorities out of line. And we're focusing on other things when the first thing that we need to try to do is make sure we can just keep it in the road. Yes. I was, several years back, I was in Montgomery. It was coming through Montgomery there one afternoon. I pulled in, they had a car wash. I, I noticed down here, man, there's car washes everywhere. When we pulled in, I pulled in the car wash. My vehicle was dirty. They had a special out beside the road. There was people standing out with signs. You know, you can get your car washed for five dollars. We'll wash it all. And dry. I said, man, I can't beat this deal. So I pull in. I we carried through the car wash. It was one of the ones you just get in and it, it hooked behind your tire and it just carried you all the way through it. And it would wash your vehicle when you come out on the other end. There was a uh, several people on the outside. They had shaming claws and they had the vacuum cleaners. Boy, they was all out there was drying the vehicle off. And I noticed this a helmet that had done come to the car wash was an SUV. His SUV had a brand new paint job on it. And he was riding on some 22s. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> These bakers were shining. The paint job looked good. The SUV was set up on this. This is where they come out of all the 26s, you know. 22s were big at the time. And boy, he was sitting up there and boy, he looked really good. And there were people all gathered around outside and boy, they were just looking at his vehicle and man, he was walking around. You know, he was really proud of his vehicle. It all looked good and he got ready to leave and he, the most disappointing thing is when he started the car. He started the vehicle and that motor went going, smoke went to coming out from up under it and I watched him. Not only did I watch him, everybody there that worked at the car wash was going. <laughs> you telling me you just went and spent Ain't no telling how many thousands of dollars on a paint job and, and you got shiny rim and you don't even know if the vehicle that you're in is going to get you from point A to point B. I'm trying to, to let you know we've got to get our priorities in order. Who cares how good it looks from the outside if the inside of it won't get you from one place to the other? Are oh, y'all still with me this morning? Man. When I first came out of trade school, I worked at a place. Everybody called it Chapman, but that was just the community it was in. It was a plywood plant. It was a lumber yard. It saw me. <laughs> Come out of high school, and I worked there a little bit the first summer. Then I went to trade school, and I went off and worked. And I came back to have a job opening as a meal ride. And so I took that job down there and began to work. One of the things about this place was, we're talking about foundation now, that this plant was built back in the probably 1800s when they didn't have a whole lot of transportation. And right beside the mill was a creek they called Rocky Creek. They used to get the lumber, and that's how they would get some of the wood there. They would float it down the creek to this place. It's built in a swamp. Y'all seen swamp men? <laughs> this place is built in a swamp. You don't realize it when you pull up. Because everything now has been beautified. They got some of the, I mean, big pine trees out front. It's a protective area. They got some of the uh, the red-headed woodpeckers there. This protected species there down there. It's a pretty place. And the grass, it being a low-lying area, man, it's all growing faster than you can cut it. It's beautiful. You pull it out there, it's just a pretty place. And, but if you pull up and you look at it, you don't notice these things. That it's built on top or built down in a swamp lane. I was there working about two years and they came in to do 
a project and they was going to build on to it. And as we got there, they started to build on to the place. I noticed they brought a piece of equipment in. Uh, I don't know what you would call it. We just call it a power driver. It's how, what they would drive pylons in the ground with uh, to make a bridge or something. And they come in with light poles that were, I'm telling you, these poles are this big around. They came in. This place is so bad that if it rains a whole lot, it will flood the whole place. I've seen it where it would flood and it would be two foot deep in water. It's how low of an area that it's in. I've seen bundles of plywood and lumber floating down, going up under the highway and people trying to get it up. <laughs> going to go build them a house. <laughs> <laughs> they came in with this. I said, what is this about? See, you cannot build nothing upon this foundation. <coughs> said it will not hold up. I said, what you going to do? He says, we have this big power driver and we got these big light poles. We're not going to build on this surface. We're going to build on something you can't see. See, this whole place is built like this. And they would come in and they would take them big light poles and they would take that power driver and they would go, boom, boom. They would drive a light pole 50 and 60 foot down in the ground until it would get to it and hit something. And it would stop. They said, no, we're not building on this. There is a rock foundation that is up under here that you cannot see. He said, the only way that this place is going to hold up is that we first of all find a solid foundation to build it upon and so we're going to drive these light poles down in the ground until we get solid rock. And everything we build on is actually being built on top of these poles. It is what's holding this whole place up. I want to tell you, I told you to look around earlier. There's some people here this morning that you can look at. Their, their foundation, you say, how in the world are they making it? I don't see how they made it through what they did. You, their foundation is not on what you see. It's some stuff it's upon a solid rock that they have been rooted and grounded upon. They have prepared for the storms of life. A storm begins to reveal and begins to uncover. It's very important that whatever you do, husband and wife, you're wasting your time if your foundation is not built upon a solid rock. Sons and daughters who, who've got a career that is ahead of you and you get in your mind making multi-millions, it, it will be absolutely no good if your foundation is not built upon a rock. What is it to have all these things and you can't keep the car inside of the ditches and you can't go from point A to point B? You've got to have a foundation. I want to declare to you today and that foundation and that rock that I'm talking about was the And he says that rock was Christ. Yes. The foundation. Yes. Well, we don't get in trouble here. You know why this minute. You got my beautiful wife here of 21 years. <laughs> Did I make it? <laughs> <laughs> Let me share this with you. Pastor, how did you make it 21 years? The same way I'm going to make it 22. And the same way I'm going to make it to 24. And the same way I'm going to make it to 25. If God see fit. And don't take one of me, me or her home first. We built our foundation upon a rock. It wasn't that storms have not come. It wasn't that we have not been through some rain and tornadoes and we have not been through the storms of lightning and hell and thunder. Well, how in the world do you continue to hold it together? Why has brought you to this place? Because we built upon a rock. Yes. The foundation. 
Jesus told them he may come in here. I'm going to close with this in just a second. There's several important matters that need to be noticed, noted in Bethlehem home. First of all, there's to be instruction. He begins to separate a wise builder from a foolish builder. And he begins to make mention that it do the Word of God. That man will be blessed. You cannot expect not to do the word of, word of God and begin to expect to receive what He's promised. You've got to be obedient unto what He said. I want to share this with you because in any building project, most of the time there is an architect. There's someone that has done went through all the paperwork and he has told you just how to build. When a general contractor gets to the contractor begins to get to a place, there are some papers that are handed to him and says, build according to this. We done went out to the site and we've established the foundation. We've examined it and we've noticed what kind of foot it's going to take. We, we, have, we also went through some work and we decided how much, how big the beams have got to be to be able to withhold a load that's going to expand so far. Stay with me right here. Instructions, a blueprint, there's an outline to follow. What good is it to have the instructions and not follow them? Grab a hold of this real carefully. You can't blame the architect for the end result of the building when you didn't follow the plan. Let me say it one more time. You cannot blame the architect for the end result when you did not follow the plan. I want to tell you, God has been given a bad rap. Amen. I'm telling you, He's taken a lot. Because people are running around here saying, look what God's done. Look what this. He didn't have anything to do with some of that stuff that's going on in your life. Some of this stuff was disobedient to what He said to do. You can't expect the architect's plan to work when you threw the blueprints. Oh, wait. What's this? Selecting the foundation, the most critical part of any building project would be this. What good is it to build an immaculate house and having it sit on top of a sinkhole? What good is it? I want to tell you the importance of building upon a solid foundation about building upon a rock. And that rock being Jesus Christ. I share with you two stories to start with about that car and about that SUV. Because sometimes we get our priorities out of line. And sometimes we're worried about getting to this and grabbing the hold of this. What good is it to have a fine paint job on your car and to have big wheels and rims and your car won't stop? What good is it to have the fastest car in the world? You can't even keep it out of the ditch. Jesus Christ is that foundation which you're to build on. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a savior. Amen. Whatever your need is, He's that. So many times, you know what I've learned? Lord help me here. I, I'm, I'm as hard headed as anybody. You know what I mean? Uh, sometimes, uh, don't take it away. This ain't tough. A little soul learning sometimes. And I've done some crazy things. And I've come back to find out if I'd just done it God's way to start with. Where I, would, where I would have been at today. You ever find you catch yourself in a place that you think that you're smarter than God? <laughs> oh, I know you never do that. <laughs> you know, you've heard the word and you know what you ought to do. You say, I just don't think that plan is going to work for me. Then about six months later, you say, I just realized that plan didn't work for me. <laughs> and you come back. The problem was what you was building upon. Jesus Christ, the foundation. And He to be the foundation of who you are. <coughs> no other name is given into heaven. On earth, under the earth, 
or to anybody which a man shall be saved, but the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I want you to stand and think this morning. Hallelujah. I want to support my prayer team. Pray for you to come up to this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you again for this opportunity to share your word. Hallelujah. Father, I believe that you've been at work even before we stepped in here this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We magnify your name. Father, I pray for healing in this house. I pray for salvation in this house first and foremost. Where things have begun to come. Mm. Jesus, the master builder. The master builder. You find yourself in your life and all of a sudden, things have begun to crumble. What do you do? There was a word that came to me and said, stand still. Stand still. The master builder is able, able, even able at this time to take that which is crumbled and hold it up. To restore. To renew. Be not just a hearer of His Word, but a doer of it. Hallelujah. If you're here this morning, you're in this house. You've tried life on your own. And you've run and you've run and you've run. You know what I'm talking about. Your house is sitting on top of a sinkhole. And the ground is slowly giving way. The master builder. He's the rock of ages. It's an old song would say that was written by Edward Moat. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest fame but holy lead on Jesus' name. When darkness fails His lovely face, I rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. His oath, His covenant, and blood support me in the welling flood. When every earthly prop gives away, he then is all my hope and stay. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh may I then in him be found, clothed in his righteousness alone. Faith faultless to send before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. As we sing this morning, the altars are open. There's healing in this house today. There's deliverance in this house today. There's salvation in this house today. The word has been released. It shall go forth and not come by forth, but it shall accomplish that which has been set forth to do. Restoration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
great blessing to be here today and uh, be a part of the baptism here in Sandra. Thank you for joining us here as a congregation. Amen. Hallelujah. Sandra, upon your confession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah.